today we'll be talking about the virtue of generosity. As, as you may have already realized, generosity in spirit as well as generosity in all we do. Our scripture today comes from the book of Luke. It is a story we all know and a story that connects us. This is from chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Jesus, he looked up and he saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in all she had to live on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's begin with our scripture. Uh, We'll get to the virtues in a minute. Uh, There's a lot going on in the story, just four verses the, we have the story that the rich people that Jesus is speaking of had obviously distracted the disciples. Jesus is talking to the disciples. Um, he's, they had distracted them with ostentatious giving. Now, if you don't know about how giving happened in the temple, uh, it was a little different than we do uh, giving in the church here. In a few minutes, we're going to take up an offering, and everybody's going to be facing the same way, and those plates are going to pass down the aisles, and you don't have to look at anyone, and you don't have to... Nobody's going to be looking at you. We're going to have music playing while we do it. There's nothing to um, distract anyone about giving unless you're going to throw a bunch of change in and make a loud noise. But in the temple, there were giving different areas to give different things. So if you were bringing uh, your gift to God was a bunch of firewood, you would put it in the bin for firewood. If your gift to God was a bunch of grain, you would put it in the bin for grain. And if your gift of God was money, you were put it in specifically in the bin for money. So, and this was in the kind of outer courtyard of the temple. So this would be like if we put a bunch of different bins out into the, the hallway there, right next to the coffee, and your giving had to go in in front of everyone, and everybody walked up one at a time and gave in that way. So the disciples and Jesus, they're talking And they're obviously distracted by someone giving a lot. And Jesus looks at them and says, you know, you need to pay attention to the next person giving, this woman who's giving quietly and giving these two coins. Uh, It seems to be a simple story about giving to our, our money to God in ways that are less obnoxious or less demanding. Or maybe it's a story condemning the church for the ways that we talk about money. We don't always do the best at that. Or maybe it's a story foretelling Christ's own gift to the church. Um, So really, when I say it's a simple story, I mean it's a short story with a lot going on. But let's start with the indictment of the church. Shortly before this, Jesus is telling uh, the disciples, he's saying, beware of those who devour widows' houses. And he's talking about um, those who demand everything from everyone. And specifically, he's talking about the temple and, and thus the church in ways that uh, are harmful. Um, the, we have this people who are giving loudly and proudly and this woman who's giving her whole living. Her whole living is another translation's use of it. She has nothing else and she gives it all. This really is an indictment of the church when we fail to model healthy and real giving. Generosity, when it comes to offering and the church, is incredibly important to who we are, but it's not meant to destroy, bankrupt, or put people in debt. And yet this woman, she gives her whole living. And there are, I'm sad to say, corrupt churches that will tell you that the more you give, the more God gives back. If you just give a little bit more, the cancer will go away. If you just give a little bit more, the debt will disappear. But we know that God cannot be bought. And it is dangerous theology that says this in harmful ways rather than helpful. A healthy understanding of giving is based in, yes, the thought that God comes first, but that God is not there to devour, to use Christ's words. But the generosity of Christ is a little bit different story. The generosity of Christ is about more than that. And I think it's found in her phrase, in this phrase, her whole living. Because Christ was seeing her give her all. Whether she knew she was already dying or whether she was simply just giving her biggest gift, we don't know the story. We don't know what was going on with her. And Jesus doesn't tell us a lot more story. But we do know that Christ saw in her 
a little bit of himself, as he planned not long after to give his own whole living. This is generosity born from God. Theologian Caroline Lewis says, God knows nothing else than to give God's whole life. God has shown time and again to God's people in the Hebrew scriptures. We should expect nothing different now. This is the essence of God, to give God's whole self. And here, now, in this unnamed widow, God is doing it again. God call us, us to whole life living. The generosity of whole life living is the story of incredible giving. Generosity, you see, is not simply about money, but about so much more. Generosity as a virtue, as we're talking about, as a building block for life, is something that must be practiced and planned. It's learned rather than simply found. One of the best ways to practice generosity, one of the, strangely, the easiest ways to practice generosity is by giving money. Um, If you want to start with money, start with getting finances in order, learning to give first rather than giving last. This only works when you have an income that actually covers your expenses. It doesn't work when there is not enough money, which is probably where this woman was. You know, learning what is needed and what is not, learning to to give first and to be generous always is a difficult thing to learn. And for those of you who are young, it is easier to learn as a young person than it is as you get into your kind of ways of giving and ways of life. I'm pretty confident about my personal finances, but I I know that I can always learn more. So I recently uh, took a class called Financial Peace University. And some of you may know about this. Um, It's a plan, it's it's a specific plan to get out of debt, to to have enough savings, to focus on giving. And, And mostly it is about generosity. And money isn't peaceful if generosity is not involved. And no matter, I have known a lot of people in my life who have had very little money, and I've known a lot of people who have had a lot of money. And regardless of where you are on the economic scale, if generosity is not a central part of who you are, money isn't in any way peaceful. Money is stressful. It, it, it gets inside your soul a little bit until you start to see it as a part of who God is. Um, you know, I, I don't recommend living in debt, but I've known people that are incredibly peaceful about their finances, even though they don't know where their next payments are go- coming from. Not because their situation is peaceful, but because of the comfort of generosity and that kind of generosity, that kind of whole life virtue is so much more than just money. Because we know that generosity some, some, sometimes shows up in strange in powerful ways. I was reminded of that time and again this week. On Thursday afternoon, I watched and listened as generosity abounded around here. We were setting up for the funeral. We weren't sure if we'd have enough seats or tables for the funerals this week, and suddenly tables appeared and chairs kept coming. I heard the words, this is just what a community does, over and over again. I heard the, of course I'll help. That's what we do. What do you need? How can I help? I didn't want us to run out, so I I baked another cake. We did not run out of cake. I can promise you that. It is about a generous spirit, a generous heart. These things that move so much more beyond money. It is teenagers showing up to care for a classmate. Not because... They didn't know what else to do, so they came. It is people speaking out and speaking up regardless of the cost to themselves. Generosity is a woman I've recently got to know whose whose child died shortly after birth. And her she couldn't bear for all of that work of her body to go to waste. And so what she did is uh, she pumped through her unbearable grief. Now, those of you who are mothers and have gone through this, you know that it is pumping for a a living child is awful. Pumping through for a child not there is unbearable in a way that I cannot imagine, and yet that was her way of moving through her grief. And so she she posted a picture of a a cooler full of milk that would go to the NICU for other babies. 
Generosity is early morning snow shoveling for neighbors who can't, or for a church. It's doing the best for someone, because, not because it's required, but regardless, it might even cost us. It's showing up at the food bank after a week of hard work. It was at the food bank on Saturday. It was many of the same people who were here on Friday and Thursday, and some of whom who were here on Wednesday even working. The virtue of whole life living is a virtue of generosity. It's giving people the benefit of the doubt because generosity of spirit is assuming the best in those around us instead of the worst. Listening for what's behind one's words, behind one's actions. A generous listener is one who doesn't begin with preconceived notions of who is right and who is wrong. A generous life is a life practiced in giving and connections that shows in our whole living. For this woman, her whole living was bound up in those two coins. For Christ, his whole living was bound up in the cross and the resurrection to come. For us, our whole living cannot be defined in one of these ways. Our whole living shouldn't be defined by our working, our money, or even our dying. Our whole living, from our waking to sleeping, our relationships, our working lives, our times at church, connecting with strangers, all of who we are, And all of what we do should be affected by our generosity, just like our perseverance. It is not a matter of being generous with money while being never being generous in relationship or spirit. It is not a matter of being miserly in some ways and not in others. It is not a matter of giving so much away that you can't eat or you go into debt. Generosity as a virtue is so much more than this. And it's so much more than do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. Virtues are not about rules, but about whole life living, thriving and living while focusing not on ourselves, but on others. Stretching those spiritual muscles and finding that the work is good. Krista Tippett, she calls generosity and love forms of instant gratification. We talk about instant gratification, we think about that as a negative thing. But when it comes to Love, when it comes to generosity, these things, they fill us up as much as they fill others. When you have the money to help, nothing feels so good as giving it away. Those lines of pay it forward, we've all maybe been a part of them or heard about them. There, there was one just last year that went on for hours upon hours where in a coffee shop line, the next person would just pay for the person behind them and on and on and on. These, the generosity of, uh, of incredible power that it, it really, it shoots off endorphins. It's, it's a physical reaction almost. This week, Flame of Faith, United Methodist Church welcomed and fed a lot of people. Not only at a difficult funeral, but also at the food bank with the boxes and the potatoes. That's the kind of generosity that worms into one's soul in a really good way and connects us to God's generosity. It's whole life living. It's giving all of ourselves, and we learn it straight from Christ, straight from God. I hope we can each add a little bit of generosity into our lives, whether it's in being generous in our relationships, or our listening, or our connections with strangers, assuming others are doing their best. (music) 